Capital. Hi, I'm 68 here, welcoming you back. As always, joined by the co-host at Pedal to the Metal, the heroic. Uh, what's up, man? Nothing, dude. Just spreading Vita love around the world. I'm a believer. Huh. <laughs> How you just you got doing? one, didn't you? I did, man. I got the egg. I got the slim. Um, not very easy to find in my neck of the woods. I live up in New England, and uh, I checked all the retail stores around me. Could not find one. They were out of stock, and from everybody's estimation, they didn't know when they were going to be getting them in. So at first blush, I thought that the Vita went from some transformation of being the console that nobody wanted to the handheld console that everybody wanted. But I think Sony's just pulling back those uh, supply numbers. So I had to wait for GameStop's headquarters to get... Uh, Load Head, it up and then headquarters. headquarters their their internet headquarters before I could order one online. I couldn't get one in a store, so but I, yeah, I got the Borderland edition, eight gig uh, little card there, and I have been having a fucking blast with it. And I want to talk about it today. So that's what Sounds I've been up good. To. Yeah, man. So uh, we also got Animal Mother on the show. What's up, Animal? Vita, so good. I like the Vita. I just I wanted in my never mind. Um, the Vita is really great system, and it's. The Vita's hard to find anywhere. Yeah. Yeah, it really is. They like, they got like a like an Amazon you can get it from like the third party suppliers there for you know eighty like, to a hundred dollars more than retail. So it's worth waiting, but yeah, they're not there's not a lot of them in the wild right now. Well it makes me wonder like what is Sony just shortchanging so they can just sell it? like I in all honesty, I think that's a smart move by Sony. Like they may not be selling gangbusters, but like ship out as few as you can and sell them all, you know, mm -hmm. and create a demand for them. Sony's creating a demand. Like you saw it wasn't available, and you're like, "Shit, now I really want to get this." <laughs> yeah, it did work on me for real. Well, I also told you how amazing it was and how awesome remote play is. Yeah, yeah, and it really is legit. I mean, my first night of using it, I had. I'm going to say maybe I played for maybe a half hour, and it was pretty buggy. I tried to go through, like, basically everything that was downloaded on my PS4. Um, and for those of you who don't know, you actually mirror um, the, the PS4's UI right on the screen through remote play. So you're actually controlling your PS4. It's the whole system. You just the whole, the whole system, system right. pipe through the Vita. Like, when I'll, I'll go upstairs and, like, lay in bed, you know, before I go to bed, I'll play, like, a, you know, a little bit of Resogun or whatever that's on the PS4. And when I'm done playing, I actually use the UI of the PS4 through the remote play to shut down the PS4 in the basement. It's amazing. And I love it. I love it. It's, it's really – that functionality to me is what Sony should be pushing. They should really be, like, throwing that in your face. Like, if you want to take your games with you around the house, on the go, you need to share a TV set with, you know, the rest of your family members. Like, shit like that is, like, practical in my house. So, like, I totally enjoy it. Mm. Plus, like, the cross-buy thing. Um, Amazing. The best indie game of all time is coming out on Tuesday. It's called Rogue Legacy. Oh, my God. And it's cross-buy, cross-save. So I've already bought that. I, I got that pre-ordered on PSN. And uh, I'm jacked to play it on Vita, PS3, and PS4 on the same save file. I'm jacked. Now, did you buy three separate copies? Nope. But one oh. copy. And, and get this. If you're a PSN Plus member, you get $3 off the game. So I, I think I spent like twelve no, ninety. Well, that's after you buy a bunch of games. They're having that. They, it's weird. They kind of took Microsoft's idea and like with the Summer of Arcade and yeah, they're they're doing that. I mean, yep. I was surprised to see that the Swapper was coming out. Play the Swapper because yeah. that game's fucking fun. The Swapper is legit. It's a really good game. Mm -hmm. If you like puzzle games, it's a good game. Mm -hmm. It's got some uh, good atmosphere too. It's like Portal with swapping. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> so uh so what have you guys been up to what's been going on i just i just blabbed out i've been waiting because we pedal to the metal over the summer is not an easy thing to record and uh we're all kind of off doing our own thing it's mostly me it's mostly my fault so i do apologize to anyone who waits for pedal to the metal but um it, it, we sometimes we go a couple weeks without getting to do a show so like what have you guys been up to what have you been doing uh i went to a baseball game with the host of pedal to the metal podcast yeah yeah I uh, it was amazing. <laughs> Animal and I went to a New York Yankees game at Yankee Stadium. I'm Stand. jealous. Yeah, I actually let him hang out near my kids too, which is <laughs> that was a yeah. big he doesn't know this, but I had a taser in my pocket. <laughs> so hey, I got your ki I got your kids con candy. You you between you and I, I, I went through the laundry list to my wife when we got home. 
You got them cotton candy. We got them peanuts, Cracker Jack, soda, uh, popcorn. popcorn. Um, you got a, You got hot. To- I mean, we, we ate like one of everything in the stadium. <laughs> we really did. Yeah. And if did you did your kids like me more than you when we left when they left? <laughs> yeah, they thought you were pretty cool. Uh, leave, we want Uncle Animal to take us out for Uncle dinner. He'll, Animal. He'll, he'll, he'll get us everything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is what my life has become. <laughs> <laughs> no, no we, was... had a, we had a really good time, man. I wish yeah. Heil lived closer so we could take Heil to it. I know he's a big Yankee fan. But we got Heil the sweetest shirt. Can I tell him or do you want to surprise? No, you can tell him. That's fine. Oh, man. We, I got Heil a shirt with Derek Jeter on the front. It said, it, you know, it says the captain and his number and on the back. It's got him, you know, like a silhouette of him reaching up and, and tapping the um, – Thank God, I thank God every day. I'm a New York Yankee. The famous sign posted in the Yankees dugout with the words from Joe DiMaggio. And uh, underneath it says, hashtag legendary. And I'm like, yes. How fitting. How fitting. So, yeah, we hooked Hyle up with a little Yankee Stadium uh, memorabilia. So, yeah. Yeah, So, so, uh, I I guess I've been playing some DLC for some games. Mm -hmm. Dragon's Teeth came out for Battlefield 4. That's... That's okay. Never played one second of Battlefield Four. Oh, uh, I I know Battlefield Four was broken. Like, not to say like, listen, I didn't have a fair share of problems that most people did, and I'm very lucky. But I can't deny the, these problems existed. But I think Battlefield Four is a pretty solid Battlefield game when it works. Um, hmm. it's a lot of fun. I think they have like one more DLC pack coming out. I mean, like they supported it throughout the year. You know, they came yeah. Five DLC packs, and um, it's it's, it's just a lot of fun to play, and just Rush is still fun, um, and blah 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 blah. Mm. Uh, I played the Crown of the Sunken King DLC for Dark Souls. Uh, that was like almost hard as shit. That was pr- that was really hard. Yeah, actually, like. Like, those enemies, for those of you who don't know Dark Souls 2, like, they added something called Poise. And I might not be 100% sure, because who knows how things work in a Dark Souls game. We, we just wing it. Um, they have something called Poise, where it's like, the amount of times you hit them, like, you can kind of wear them out. So they get, uh, they like, they can get stunned, and it gives you, like, a second to really go to town on them. Like, there are some enemies in that DLC that are just, like... The poise is off the fucking charts. Like they don't stop for nothing. Yeah. Like yeah. you'll you'll be swinging your sword, and they'll be like, "Nope, you're you're fucked. Yeah. You're dead." Mm. Um, but it's really good, really maze like, really big DLC. It takes about five six hours to beat. Mm-hmm. Uh, two bosses. Uh, I, it's it's really intimidating. It reminded me a lot more of like Dark Souls when you get when you first go to it and you're like, "Holy shit, I am fucked." You yeah, just, you just look at it and you're like, "Fuck." Mm. I um I have yet to play Dark Souls too. I admit it. It's good. Yeah, yeah. Um, how about I wonder what Hyle's been playing? Me, I'm still playing um the same game. Still playing um, still gotta finish um uh, Watch Dogs. But I've been busy with uh, vacations and stuff like that, so I haven't um I haven't been playing a lot the last like two weeks. Yeah. Uh, so same Hyle, same Hyle, old I games. S- <laughs> yeah. I, I see you playing with fireworks a lot, Hyle. Are, have you like lost your mind? What's what's well, going yeah, on? Yeah, they're not legal here, so we had to go across the border and get some this year. So you you sound like you're smuggling people. We got to go across the border and get <laughs> fireworks. <laughs> <laughs> they were awesome though. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. I have, are you ready for my laundry list of games that I've actually sat down and put like legit time into? Yeah. All right, I'm still putting in a few hours a week into Rezo Gun. Now, um, you're fucked up. What's the matter with I'm, you? I've been playing MLB 2K the show. Resogun is the PS4's best game until Tuesday. And, uh, Wait, um, Tues- oh. Tuesday's Rogue Legacy. Um, I've been playing, um, Mira, Mira, is it Miramasa? Miramasa the Demon Blade. No, it's not the Demon Blade. It's the. The Rebirth. Miramasa. Miramasa Rebirth. Yeah. Um, is a, what a fun game that is. Wow, dude! If you, I know you've played it, Animal. I yeah, I I love like Miramasa is one of the best 
it's it's a really good like Metroidvania style game. And it's yeah. it's like it's like but it it keeps you on track. The battle system is pretty tight. Like the blade system is pretty cool and you know, it has two campaigns. Yeah, yeah. And they added some DLC that I have to buy. Is it long? I it's 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 a riot to play. Like I love all the combos and linking everything together, and it's fast, fluid action. It actually reminds me, for those of you who've never played, it reminds me a little bit of um, the dishwasher a little bit. Um, and some of the the scenarios and setups, but it's it's a Japanese game. It's got a very Japanese overtone to it. But it took, took it took me five or six hours to beat the first campaign. Okay. And then since I started, um, I started the female. Uh, uh, Momohime, the girl campaign. Uh, I start once it came out on Vita for free. I downloaded the system. I mean, I own it, but I was like, oh, I'll just throw it on the system anyways. Right. Uh, I started playing her campaign. Mm. Um, and then there are two DLC. Uh, two DLC uh, or three DLCs. Mm. Um, yeah, I'll have to check those out as I start burrowing through. I, it's. I don't think it's a game that I'm going to just shelf. I think I'll. I'll probably play at least the first um half the game through the first chapter but um oh it, it can it stays continuously fast and furious yeah yeah i like, like that it's really nice like, a little bit of grinding in there to beat some of the tougher bosses like i really dig it it's got a good flow to it it's difficult yeah. but it's not i i haven't gotten anything yet that's been overly punishing and i really like the system with the switching the swords and yeah you know it's it's got some some good thoughts there but um, I've been doing that. I've been doing the Sonic Kart game on the Vita. I've been doing a ton of remote play stuff. I mean, I feel like I've been, like, play, like I don't get a lot of time to play, but, like, every time I pick the Vita up now, I'm just, I'm streaming something. I'm remote playing from the, the PS4 or I'm, you know, playing a whole bunch of games that I've had downloaded from PSN Plus in anticipation for it, getting a Vita at some point. So I've been just burning through stuff. But Yeah, the remote play is what's most... Uh appealing to me so i'm glad it's uh, working well yeah 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 it's um i don't know and we we did this week had um i had a new modem put in the house through the cable company and uh, i don't know if that had anything to do with it or it's the first time i tried it you know we were taxing the bandwidth or what however it works but the first time i tried it i was like wow this feature isn't just bad it's horrific because i couldn't do any i mean i couldn't even get um i put an in infamous second son and i couldn't if the, if the screen stayed stagnant you could see the beautiful detail and the scope of the city. But a second that Delson moves on the Vita through remote play, it bogged down the like sh- you it, it, it basically, or... Yeah, it basically disconnected. You get that gray screen chop. And um it just basically that was it. It disconnected and I was like, wow, this is not good. And Resogun is far too precise of a game. Even with even with it working well, the screen is too small to to make any type of a serious run at, at the leaderboards in, in Resogun. Um I think I'm top thousand or something in one of my scores. I think 47 million points or something, and there's no way I could get that on the handheld. But, um, anyways, I've been I've been dumping through tons of games. But I want to get into some topics tonight, guys. Do you know what we're talking about tonight? No, I w- I woke up. And you, you guys were like podcast. I was like, all right. <laughs> I well, the first thing I wanted to talk about was the impressions of the Destiny beta, and I actually want to start with Hyle because Hyle and I've been now. Hyle, you're a big Halo guy, right? Like you've always been like traditionally like quite a big Halo fan. Yeah, for the most part. Yep. <clears throat> yep. Um, I don't I don't really know what your opinion was on Halo Four, but I know that you were a big Halo Three guy and and before that. But um, Destiny's out. Uh, in beta form, and you and I played it. What did you think? I liked it up until I thought. I still think it needs to be uh, more balanced. Um, I don't like. Uh, in what way? Um, some of the end content was pretty difficult. I mean, even for sub ten level. I mean, mm. the one part with the captains and the wizards that that just took a little bit, but um, the tank part that was way overpowered. Mm. Don't you think so? I mean, each hit was thirty-five, and it was probably. I thought the tank, the tank part was a glaring flaw in the design, in, in the sense that you needed when the three of the three of us, it was Champ, you and I playing in that sequence, and one one fire team should be able to take out a boss in under thirty minutes. I mean, it, it was a good. I felt like we were hacking away at that thing for a good twenty minutes at one point. Without now, mind you, this is without 
dying and resetting the sequence, just chipping away, taking nothing away from it. And I mean, it's not like we didn't have the sequence figured out. You blow away its legs, you get it to drop, you get it to, you know, expose its weak spot. I mean, we had it in order. It's just that you run out of bullets. <laughs> you shoot so much at it. It's... Yeah, that's that's something I noticed when you fight the first like Archon when you're getting the warp drive. Yeah, it's like you run out of. It's like how how does that even? But I think I think it's meant to be played as uh, it's supposed to be be played cooperatively, have very heavily, so you don't mm. run out of bullets. Yeah, that's just not fun to me. It, it makes it not fun. Well, I also heard you were level three too, and you might have gone into like a level. What was it? The strike mission you guys played? Well, we were we were technically in. I think we were no, in Kyle's world. I'm in level six, or oh, are you now? Yeah. Mm, uh, that was only doing like 35 damage to the tank. What were you? What class were you? Uh, the hunter. Mm, I I couldn't help you. I only played a titan class. Um, yeah, I did a hunter. Well, those guys weren't killing the tank either. I mean, it was just my me, so I don't know. Yeah, we we there was definitely some disconnect there. Like I felt like we needed like a fire team of about ten guys in order to to, to kill that boss in under tw you know twenty minutes, and it was just like what is going on here. But um, I, you know, other than that, I mean, I do agree with Hyle. Like I think that one of the the downfalls of Destiny's enjoyment over long periods of time for me is going to be the sense that if I can't play to the end game on my own, um, that's gonna that's gonna I think dampen my not that i don't want to play with friends and other people and share in the community experience and all that stuff but like more times than not the way that life works especially with where i am in my life with limited time to game anyways i'm not waiting for people to game like when i want to game i'm going to sit down and game right then and there you know mm. so like that kind of that kind of bugs me but what about as far as like like controls and stuff animal what did you think about like the way the game uh i i pushed I pushed everything straight to, uh, I pushed everything straight to, uh, COD controls. And that was it. Like, I didn't, I didn't, uh, do anything else. Uh, I, I thought it controlled really fine. Like, I don't really like Bungie's default controls for things where, like, R1 is the, the, the melee button. Mm. It's like, I just, I don't like that. So I switched to COD controls. That was really nice. Yeah. Um, da, 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 da. I mean, like, I, I thought it was a lot of fun. I think, I, like, I don't know what the level cap is, mm. but, like, to be level, like, 10 by the end of, the, like, level 6 by the end of the first area, you know, I got up, I did the satellite array mm -hmm. uh, where you have to fend off and um, fend oh, off yeah. the army. Yep. Like, I just, I think that... It, I don't know if you need faster levels or slower levels, but that depends on their level cap. Mm. Um, I heard through the giant bomb cast that uh, it might be twenty, and if it's twenty, then like, like what? Like, how, like how are those late game levels? Like, it's what is it going to take like days to level up? Mm. Um, yeah, if they I, want endless grinding, I mean, grinding in general to me, I don't care for. I've done it before, but uh, if that's how they're inflating their worlds for content then that's just another um i think a tractor yeah uh, i think it's kind of two-faced that they're already talking about the content and that the season pass is already on sale it's just like hey you know balance your shit first before you worry about all this other content i didn't hear that they're they're already putting a deal on it's already out it's on the playstation store already the the season pass yeah and the game yeah. doesn't come out for another month yeah. Two months, actually. Mm -hmm. um, like, like what the fuck? Like, they should have, like, I feel like companies should be like, hey, we're going to have a season, like, the week before release, we're going to have a season pass. Like, this is what it's going to be. We're going to support it continuously throughout the year. Yeah. Don't announce it. They announced it back at, at fucking E3 with all this DLC, and it's just like, you know, your game's a little unbalanced. You know, definitely need some work because I don't think, like, if they're driving it as, like, a loot MMO, like, I didn't feel like, like, the itch wasn't there, like, in a Diablo or a Borderlands. Like, Borderlands, the thing, the problem is they inundate you with loot. Like, Borderlands is just like, loot, 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 loot. And the problem with that is 
you kind of start seeing some of the same guns with just different properties. Mm. Diablo does it cl- like very close to perfect, where it's like, okay, you got to go on legendary runs, you got to find your loot, you got to find it, you got to find it, you got to work for it. But they drop, like Diablo drops you just enough to be like, hey, we're we're gearing you out so you can just. Uh, like you can keep going, so you can keep getting better. Like yeah. Destiny, like if it's a loot game, like I saw one loot chest like the whole ten like ten hours I played the thing. Yeah. Like what? Well the loot chests are scattered around the map and they're hidden in caves mostly and odd, you know, little places that they, they're trying to get you to go explore and but I do agree with, with the sense like when I think of de- the first thing that popped off the page is from a gameplay style, um you know, the breadth of the game reminded me of Borderlands, but it didn't have, I agree with you, it didn't have that same, like, every time you get a gun in, in Borderlands, you got kind of giddy about it, like, you know, what's this going to do, and where with Destiny, I, I can't say, and it, it, again, it was just the beta, and there was a lot, there's a lot of filler weapons that you, you pick up in Borderlands too, where you just instantly scrap them or sell them, um, but the thing I liked about what Destiny does is I, I really like that the more you use that particular weapon, the more upgrades you can unlock for. You can unlock the better. You start with, like, the down-the-rail sights, and the more you use that weapon, you unlock the red dot and then the, the, the zoom and, you know, a couple of other little perks in the weapon, faster reload and things but, like but, that. But, but Borderlands 2 has the same thing. It has yeah. weapon proficiency. I mean, it's nothing new in games. Right. Like, yeah, the red dot, like the – like. Unlocking stuff a little bit like COD is pretty neat, but it's just like a a lot of games have weapon proficiency Mm -hmm. where you get these little quirks for using the guns for longer periods of time. Yeah. Like to me, that's not like, like, oh, like, look at it. Like, holy shit. It's just like, like, oh, okay. Like, like I felt like, I felt like Destiny didn't drop enough loot. And I feel like the loop, the loot that it dropped. Mm-hmm. Was not like giving me the same gun models with just different damage. Now is that like we we talked about this at the base? We went to a fucking baseball game. We talked about Destiny. Yeah. Um, it's like is that a product of the beta? Like, what's a product of the beta? How old is the beta build? You know. Right. Like, is the beta from like April or February or? It like looks March? damn polished. I mean, that's that's the most polished well, that's, beta that's, I've that's, ever that's played. That's Bungie too, though. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, the the game, I, I can't say that I had even a single hiccup in, um, you know, not that I went out of my way to try to break the game necessarily or would even know how to break the game, but... You take um, it. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I did things like jump off a high cliff and then quickly, you know, spawn my um, my speeder bike. I keep calling it a speeder bike because it looks like the speeder bikes from Star Wars. Um, but I, I would spawn the speeder bike with like a 50 to a hundred foot drop and then watch the thing nose dive into the ground and roll over with you still sitting on it. I mean, you know, I tried all like goofy things like that, but, um, I don't know. I mean, I, I see what you're saying. There's, there's nothing about what destiny is doing that makes me feel like it's reinventing the wheel, but it does feel when I'm playing it, like it is not only is it a hell of a lot of fun, but it feels like it's going to be a huge time sink. I feel, I feel like I'm going to dump 100 hours into the game with no problem. It's, it's I know you guys think I'm crazy because I know um, Animal has it, but I, I still think Diablo 3 Ultimate Edition has that capability for consoles as well. I got probably, uh, let's see, two level 60 characters plus a 20. Wow, on PC? Yeah, I probably have... I didn't realize you played it that much. I probably have 150 plus on that, so... I think – well, I know for sure that's why I'm getting that one. So mm. that's why I really hope that you guys do. But, um, I, I, don't, ugh, I don't know. I, I'm, yeah. I'm afraid with uh, Destiny that you're going to get to a point where, like most MMOs, where um, it's only raiding left with groups and um, just grinding, you know, because you beat all the content that you can, which, you know, if it, you get over 100 hours or mm. close to 100 hours and – that's a really good value for sixty dollars, but I don't yeah. think it's going to be a traditional. Or I don't know. I guess I shouldn't say that, but I don't feel that they'll give content like other popular MMOs where you'll be playing new content regularly. Yeah, I guess we'll see. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the the big thing for me at this point is that I've thoroughly exhausted all of Old Russia. Like I'm. I know the the whole map like the back of my hand. I know where each of the the hallways are going to lead, and I'm I'm desperately 
wanting to like branch out in that world is to kind of you, I mean you guys know what it's like whenever you pick up a game for the first time you you know learn it's learn what it's going for you you know you learn it the ins and outs get familiar with the map and the controls and then you hit your groove where you're just sucked into the game and you're playing it you know the, I know that's how I am anyways I hit like a sweet spot with games where I end up playing it for you know a, a couple weeks where I'm really really like grooving on it and I feel like Destiny, the beta ends right when you get to that spot for me, where I was like, okay, now I've got like what this game is going for, and I want to like peel the layers back, but I've got to wait like another three weeks. But um, I think it's going to do well. I think it's going to commercially do well, and I think review wise, I think it's going to score. I think it'll score in the high 80s on Metacritic. What do you guys think? I, I don't know. Like, I think Destiny is going to be one of those games that just gets an eight, and I think it evolves from there to become. Mm-hmm. A better, a better game than what it is. Like I, th- I think it's, I think it's sharp. I think it's well polished. Mm. Uh, I, I, it's just, I just think it's, it's, it needs, it needs a lot of work. And for Bungie to be worrying about downloadable, uh, not to say that that's their mo, because I mean, listen, Bungie puts out really solid games. Mm. Um. Like, I just, I think to be pushing the DLC this early in the game's lifespan when it's not even out yet, it's kind of just like, hey, show us the features of your game and, like, show us what we can do. Like, don't, don't, like, I mean, yeah, the beta was cool, but it's just like, the beta was kind of really tight and small, like, Mm. you know. Yeah. Yeah, no, I hear you. Yeah, so, um... How about any closing comments on Destiny, you guys? I don't know. Hyle, what do you think? Is what's it going to score? I think I think around eight is probably fine. I don't think it'll score nine because of uh, launch issues and possibly lack of content. Mm-hmm. Nice. I think it, I think it'll have plenty of content. I think it's just I think it's a matter of is that content variable? Like, will it mm-hmm. vary enough? Yep. So, um. <laughs> The next thing I wanted to talk to you guys about today, this one I've actually been waiting all day. I've been excited to talk about this one, but I got my new Game Informer magazine, um, and every year they do their Hot 50, which is the um, 50 hottest games post E3. So they basically, you know, catalog everything that they see on the floor, every game that they saw at E3, and they they put a list together of what they believe the hottest 50 games are. So I'm assuming neither of you two have read this article yet, have not seen the games. Is that right? No, I have not. Okay. Anyone want to guess at what numbers one, two, and three are? Uh, Number one, number, one of them is Destiny. Correct. Another one is probably Bloodborne. Call of Duty? Nope. No. Call of Duty was number six. Uh. Um, uh, da, 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 da. Numbers one, two, and three are only on next-gen consoles and PC. Oh, okay. So one of them was Arkham Knight. Batman was number two. Destiny, Destiny was, was number, number three. Oh, Destiny was number three? What was number one? It's only next gen. Hmm. Halo 5? Nope. No. No, actually, because I'm, I'm going to talk about some of the ones that I was shocked on the list. Wait, number one. No, don't. What What was number one? I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> number number f- uh, Halo 5, dude, was in the honorable mentions. It didn't I'm even sure didn't even make their think. top fifty. Halo Five Guardians. Well, there hasn't been much shown of it either. Yeah. So yeah. I can't wait, think of what else second. is coming out just for new consoles besides Arkham. Sure, Hold you guys on. can. This game actually is coming out sooner rather than later. Hold on, let me think. Let me think. Don't. Don't tell me. Sooner rather than later. <laughs> I, I, I cue, honestly... Cue the Jeopardy music. No, 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 no. It's not oh, Evolve, God. is it? No, no. It is Evolve. Heil nailed it. Oh, Evolve. I, kind of, oh. I could have swore Evolve was coming out for PS3, 360, but it's not, huh? Nah, nope. PS4, X1, and PC, and it's oh, released... See, that's why I wasn't thinking that, but... 
Yeah, its release date's October 21st. We got that wicked cluttered end of October where it's like Assassin's Creed Unity, Evolve. You got Far Cry right around the corner. I mean, you got like a bunch of games coming there towards, what is it, late October? Well, Shadow of Mordor moved up a week, so it didn't yeah. have to compete with the fucking ridiculous October 7th uh, release date. Um, like, October 7th was like the fucking day. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let me tell you what's in October... October 7th, it was supposed to be, get this, it, originally it was supposed to be uh, Middle Earth, Alien Isolation, Drive Club, uh, NBA 2K15, and Project Spark, mm. and Ga and Dragon Age originally. They moved that to November 18th. Now. Right. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the false the October is like the most fucked month ever. Crammed, yeah. And 2015 is like... Holy the shit. The poster year. child for yeah, we'll get to it. We'll get to it. Next we'll gen. It. Yeah. Uh it's it's gonna be it looks like two thousand fifteen, although I, I would imagine that a lot of these games that if they just say T B A or two thousand fifteen could also see two thousand sixteen depending on where they are in their development cycle. But... No, like I think I think if if there are any games we're gonna see in twenty sixteen, I think maybe Tomb Raider. Because uh, we just saw the trailer at E3, I think that might be a 26, 2016, I can't believe I'm already talking about. What about this. what about Uncharted? I think Uncharted will be twenty fifteen. Why do why do why is Uncharted gonna be twenty fifteen? And we saw a a little snippet of nothingness, and we saw a little snippet of nothingness from Tomb Raider, but that's gonna be twenty sixteen. Uh, it's because fucking Naughty Dogs gonna are deliver. God, they're gods. The naughty they, gods are going to deliver. The naughty gods. No, uh, I think, you know what it is? I think that um, with, you know what the thing is, too? You have to look at an established franchise. Like, I know what some people would say, well, like, like an established franchise like Uncharted is, uh, I mean, they have the formula. It just depends how good they got to make it. Something like Tomb Raider, this is a sequel. They have to make this good. Like, mm. this is, this is, I think, I think Tomb Raider 2013 was one of the, the, the better games of last year. It was yeah. awesome. It was a fun game. And it was like, they have a lot to live up to. Mm. So it's like, I think that they would need the time over a studio like Naughty Dog. I mean, like, listen, there's no doubt about it. Naughty Dog is just fucking talented beyond belief. Right. Um, so I think that's, that's why you could see an Uncharted in 2015. And, and Tomb Raider would not want to compete with Uncharted. Mm, yeah at all no i don't think so i think that would be i think that would be yeah, bad on, on both accounts i think not just for um tomb raider but i think that they cannibalize each other yeah they do i mean you know tomb raider sold f what five million plus copies um on on its reboot and what is uncharted usually does about the same right per cop per installment about i think i think the whole franchise is up to like 21 yeah yeah so they they do pretty well. Um, so this is the rest of the top ten and um, comments and thoughts on this. So I, I told you the top three were Evolve, uh, Batman Arkham Knight, which looked phenomenal, and Destiny. You had number four, The Witcher 3. Number five, No Man's Sky, one of the games. I'm surprised came. that No Man's Sky is like the poster child for like what – can be next gen i feel though well it's because i think think about the the hype that that's generating though and it's not generating it based on looks it's generating it based on gameplay ideas. what 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 it hopes i think I, I think i can speak for almost every gamer out there and saying that we're all rooting for no man's sky because this is the game that i feel like is going to propel ideas if if they can pull it off it's going to propel ideas forward, much like the movement in Minecraft where, you know, you had a lot of these copycat games pop up and kind of play off of that same idea. I'm not saying that No Man's Sky could be the next Minecraft, but it kind of could, too, in a way. You know, you just you just had another Minecraft clone come out called Unturned. It's an early access game. Yeah, I think it I think it was created by like a 15 year old or something. Yeah. Yeah, my kids are hooked on Terraria right now, which is basically 2D Minecraft, and I'm going to get uh, my oldest son into Skybound soon, and or is it Starbound? Starbound. Um, but, you know, No Man's Sky looks, to me, is, is would be in my top three from E3, what I saw. Uh, number six was Call of Duty Advanced Warfare, which 
I swear to God, someone paid Game Informer to put that in. <laughs> that game. Did, I mean, Hyle, what did you think? Did you Was there anything about that trailer that made you go, oh, yeah, Call of Duty is totally, like, fresh again? I feel no. like people say that every year, though. They're like, holy shit, look at Call of Duty. It's looking, like, solid. Yeah, I never say that, ever. I, I say that every year, like a fucking idiot. Yeah, I never, ever. I haven't played Call of Duty since the first Black Ops when I was like, all right, I'm done. Black, Black Ops, Ops wasn't even that bad. It wasn't even that bad. Black, I, Black Ops Two is really good, actually. Yeah, I, I just, I, you know, for me, it just got to a point where I'm like, I, I'm, I'm kind of, I, I, I can spend sixty dollars elsewhere and get more out of the game. I mean, I don't play online, um, Call of Duty, so for me, that's just a waste of time. Sixty dollars for an eight-hour campaign is not something I'm willing to do. But, Hyle, what are your thoughts on that? Um, I don't know. I think uh, well, that's kind of tough because. Uh... I, as far as Call of Duty, or yeah, like just like, do you think it's, Call of Duty deserves from what you saw? I mean, you saw. I'm sure you watched a ton of the trailers, and I'm sure we didn't see as much as they did on the floor. But I mean, was Call of Duty like top ten E3 material for you, or was it just more Call of Duty? I think it's just more Call of Duty. I mean, yeah, no matter if they do mechs or jetpacks or whatever. Right. I mean, it's just the same. I guess yeah. formula they've used since Modern Warfare. So, yeah, yeah, I felt I felt the same way. And but they have such a huge marketing campaign. Those guys are such ingrained with the websites that mm. I don't think anyone of the major game sites is going to tank it. Yeah. So, yeah, and that, and that's sad. That's that's really sad because you have people when Battlefield Four came out and was fucking absolutely broken. It still got an eight. I mean, yeah. listen. And then you have a game. I'm, I'm gonna sound so butthurt. But then you have like a game like, like I think we need to like reviewers need to reevaluate their stances on something. Because mm. then you see a game like Batman Arkham City, Arkham uh, Arkham Origins, yeah, which is decent. I'm not gonna sit here and say, listen, and it is more Batman. But that game sits there and it gets a six. Like they're like, well, it's more Batman, and it's just like, blah 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 blah. It's just like, it's like. You can't say one thing's more of the same, right? And then give it an eight, and it's absolutely fucking broken. And then you can't say another thing's more of the same, and then give it a fucking six. Which is it? Mm. You know? Yeah. Because because that that throws off that throws off the basis of people. Right. Because if they're like, if if younger generations of gamers, you know, the people who are fifteen, sixteen, right. seventeen now, they're like, oh well, they're saying it's more the, who are really getting into gaming, and they're like, oh, it's more of the same, mm. like. What's to stop me from, like, just uh, – I, I lost the point. I saw a Walking Dead ad. Well, I mean, the single player is always going to be redundant. I think the multiplayer could hook people in. I mean, yeah, sure. there's league play with that and stuff like that. So yeah. that's there's, always going to – I mean, you really don't need to change that formula much to have people have fun sure. with the game. And, the, and there's a lot to be said, too, for a game and, – and I'm going to – play devil's advocate to my original point and bashing call of duty for being the same but there is a lot to be said for a, a game and a franchise that caters to millions of people that love what that game does i mean like you just said there's leagues there's there's people that are used to playing call of duty you know because they love they want to play more call of duty because it's more call of duty like they they want to be invested in what call of duty does they don't want there to be a you know a huge shift in what call of duty is going for because they're invested in what call of duty is um i do think it's funny that in a way that they have no man's sky which represents everything that is on the horizon in video games directly next to call of duty which kind of represents everything of where we've kind of stagnated to um on their top 50 so i, I don't know for me like i looked at the list and i, I saw call of duty at number six and i'm like Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe this is unfair to say, you know, about Game Informer. I don't know how much integrity they have, but um, I thought it was kind of funny that that it was in the top ten because I didn't feel like Call of Duty was necessarily a top ten, you know, talk about game. But uh, number seven, Hyle, one of your favorites, Far Cry Four. Yeah, I think that's gonna be a lot of fun. Hopefully, they fix the the co-op, which I think the netcode was somewhat busted the last game where you got disconnected and. A lot of freeze ups, so mm. uh, the, the single player will be just fine with me because I really enjoyed Far Cry Three. So the different things, the camps, the towers, traversing yep. through the map, I'll I'll enjoy all that. So mm. the story, I don't, I really don't care about the story too much. What villain it is, you know, he's going to die. So yeah, yeah. But I hope that the co op is good. So I'm rooting for that. 
Right. And then uh, you go right into number eight, which is one of animals most anticipated, Bloodborne. Uh, I can't wait for Bloodborne. Here's a question for you, Animal, about Bloodborne. It, Bloodborne is going to be one of those games that I feel like, given the pedigree from software, you know, it's an exclusive to a PS4, so they're not going to have the whole multi-platform, you know, degradation if you believe in all that stuff. I, I believe that there's there's a split of resources sometimes. Sure, absolutely. I do too. Um, but is Bloodborne an impact? Is, is, Blo- is Bloodborne a, a, a system seller? Yes. No way. Mm-hmm. Wow. I, I, I think so. I think if you look at the, I think if you look at the pedigree of a game like Dark Souls, mm-hmm. and how popular those games have become, yeah. Like, it's just kind of. I think, I think for at least the Soul, like, I mean, you have to look at it. Like, there's obviously the Soul series is doing something right. Dark Souls 2 was still well received as his predecessor, but you know there were some things the community yeah. were not too happy about. But I think that if you have, even if you have a million people, like that's a that's a million consoles sold right there. Yeah, yeah. You know, like I think, I think it's a, I think the the Souls games hit a specific pedigree, and I think mm-hmm. the original, um, I think the original. Um, Director of Dark Souls, creating a new game is definitely interesting. Oh sure, and uh, it's something people absolutely want, and I think people will buy into it. Um, I th- I think that it's it's going to be and Heil, you can give us the, your your differing opinion. I think that Bloodborne is going to be one of those games that we as gamers hold up on a pedestal of what what is great about gaming and this new movement of difficulty and bringing back the challenge in games. And I, I think that there's, there's a, there's a demographic of gamers that are going to just hold blood bo- if they execute it the way that we think they will um, up on a pedestal. But I think that the general public is going to pass over it. I think so too. Cause it's a niche game as far as difficulty. Yeah. Like but, the- but the general public doesn't know that. They'll find out soon enough. It's like the Souls game, so. Mm-hmm. And and I don't even. I mean, tell me how do how do the Souls games sell? Hold on, I, let me see. I'm not even sure. I've never even bothered to look into any of that, but um, they sell well. But compared to other AAA top tier games, they probably can't because I can see people buying right, like uh, Tomb Raider over it. But. Yeah, like Namco, I, Namco, Namco, uh, Namco Bandai's yearly fisc, uh, financial report that what is this? Is this Dark Souls one? Yeah, this is Dark Souls 1. Uh, sold 1.119 million units in the United States and Europe by March 2012, so about eight and eight months. As stated as of April 13th, the game sold 2.4 million units worldwide. Mm. Dark Souls 1? Uh, yeah, let me see. Uh, Dark Souls 2, within a week of release, sold 1.2 million copies. That's just Europe and North America so far. So no, I'm sorry. Million. It was like it was like within a month it had sold 1.2. 1. 1.2 1. in a month. Wow. Yeah. So it's gonna sell maybe three million over its life. Yeah. Overall, uh, um, hmm, that's interesting. See, I and 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 I think I think that like, it's it's something special. Like there are people out there that just sit there and play throughout the Souls games over and over. Like I know I did it. I built, I have built, like a couple characters and. And, like, you play through the game, you try to learn every system in it, and it's, it's just a, it's a lot of fun. I bet you that Bloodborne doesn't sell as much as uh, The Order. I bet The Order outsells Bloodborne. Yeah. But, yeah, I think but, that's so too. The, that, but that's the thing too. You have to look at the you have to look at the market. Like we, yeah, that's what I'm we, saying. That's what I'm we saying. We as I'm... gamers, we as gamers, sit and go, whoa, 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 like linear movie games. But like, regardless, like people don't look at the fact that, like, listen, we don't have to enjoy these games, whatever. But at the end of the day, these people, like these companies, are in business. They have to make money. They have families to feed. Sure. Like they they have to. They they have to make money, and if if they know that that's something that will sell, why not make it? Yeah. Like if I could stick crap on a stick and sell it for fifty dollars a pop, and people were buying it, <laughs> I'd be like, yeah, oh fucking k, let's, I'm I'm cool, yeah. 
supply and demand would never be out of whack in animals world. <laughs> <laughs> you need shit in a stick? I got that for you. Um, okay, I'm you know, I mean I agree with you. I I just I, I Bloodborne is the exactly the type of game that I root for as a gamer. I I I, li- I love when a game nails a genre and I feel like the Souls games have almost brought back a genre they of, revived the genre yeah yeah of, of difficulty in games and and uh, challenge and getting getting your satisfaction not from just kind of running through on rails but from your own skill and and when you get bitch slapped you got bitch slapped because of your your poor judgment and not because of something in the game breaking you know and um I think Bloodborne is gonna is probably gonna service that demographic of gamers, and it it may expand. Maybe they'll do four million. I just don't see Bloodborne being a game that's going to move move PS4s. I I think it'll move a couple. Like I think you know what the thing is though. You you have the general public that looks at a game and go, "Wow, that looks fucking awesome!" Like I'm gonna go buy a PS4 for this game. Mm-hmm. Like I, I I'm I'm very excited for it because. Whereas Dark Souls is a Dark Souls is a game about a lot of parrying and like you know standing your ground yep. and kind of moving around the enemies. Yeah, it seems that Bloodborne is a lot more movement based game. That's if yeah, where it's kind of like all right, I have to stay moving while fighting these enemies because you have a scythe in one hand and a shotgun in the other. So it's like you know obviously you're going to be able to block, but to what Right. To what degree? Um, yeah, sure. I mean, I, I don't know. I like I said. I mean, I'm rooting for it, and and it certainly looks amazing. I mean, I think that, and and kudos to Sony because you know if if there's one knock I can say against Microsoft is that they're the the best Microsoft games, the most highly touted exclusives that I feel like Microsoft a lot of times goes after are also very familiar feeling games. You know, the Halos, Forzas, and, and Gears of the World are, well, are at this look, point look, very look, familiar, and, and they're guaranteed big sellers. It's cool to see Sony go out and say, we're going to make this game that maybe has a niche following. I actually agree with Hyle on that, that it's a niche following, and but we're going to give you more of it because we know you like it. You know, and I think that's kind of cool. Uh, yeah, I think that's kind of ballsy of Sony. And I think, I think, you know, where's Sunset Overdrive on that list? I'm curious. Well, that's that's kind of what I'm getting into. I'm going to close out the top ten. We said number eight was Bloodborne. Number nine was Assassin's Creed Unity, which oh uh, fuck, the, fuck Assassin's. Nah, you're gonna, you know, you're gonna play it. I'm not it. gonna buy. It. I still have. Comes out beat... October 28th. I'll see you. I then. still have not beat four. Really? Yeah. You don't I need got... to beat four to enjoy it. I don't even know what happened. I, I enjoyed. I enjoyed it. Don't get me I wrong. It's just kind of like, like, like I can't. Yeah. Fuck assassins. Like I'd rather save my money for Far Cry. You'd rather fuck assassins. Yeah, I'd rather fuck assassins. Thanks. There goes. <laughs> there goes our CBS deal. <laughs> we'll fuck assassins. Uh, no, I think I think Unity and Heil linked me into the new trailer the other day, and I thought it looked kind of hot. I mean, what do you think, Heil? I think it looks really good too. So I really enjoyed right. four. So hopefully yeah. it's uh, more of this. Of that same and less uh, eavesdropping missions. I think I think that Ubi's gonna fuck up elements of it because they always fuck up elements. What doesn't Ubi fuck up? Well, I, I hey, I'll give Ubi a lot of credit. I mean, they when they do nail a game, they nail it pretty hard, and they do get some some you know they start with a full head of steam, but then they rape it, and I can't stand that. <laughs> then they oh my God. <laughs> then they murder it, and it's gone. Oh my! But uh, God. number ten was Alien Isolation. Um, which I thought was kind of interesting. Um, I, I don't know much about it. I didn't actually look, watch the trailer. It's, it's for... amnesia with aliens. What it's, right. Oh, it's that's like... right. That's right. It's, it's and it's got the pure... Sigourney Sigourney Weaver um, did a, a role for it. And... Yeah, they, the the whole the whole original crew came back. Yep. Um, real quick, then you go from. Uh, I'm not going to read them all, but there are a lot of that you know already. Um, the first Nintendo exclusive that that reared its head was number 18 with super smash brothers. It was beaten by Microsoft PC, um, Ori in the blind forest, mortal Kombat X and a few others below. Um, so super smash brothers was lower than I think Nintendo fans <laughs> maybe, maybe would hope for number 19 was, uh, metal gear solid five, the phantom pain, um, God, which phantom pain is going to be so good. Yeah, um, that's when that one's exciting. Uh, Twenty one was Mario Maker, which I mean, I guess if you're in that um, 
uh, little big planet type of mentality or, or you like that, that genre. Well, they, like they've talked about for Mario maker, they've talked about, you can't share levels or download levels online. Like what's the fucking point of Mario? Oh maker? yeah. Then, then that game shouldn't be anywhere. Yeah. Like it's, it's a neat idea, but what the fuck? Yeah. And just for comparison's sake, uh, little big planet three was 47 on the list. So that one didn't make a huge, I guess, impression with them. I mean, they're in the top 50. So, I mean, that's something to be said, but, um, maybe not as high as some of the, the prequels. Were. Sunset Overdrive, where is it? Sunset Overdrive, that's what I was getting to. Oh, and by the way, 24 is Axiom Verge, which is like a Metroid indie game that is coming out from developer Tom Happ. Um, I think it's one guy building the entire can, game. Can you just answer my I question? Can't, I can't. I, I, it's 27. Sunset Overdrive Thank is 27. You. And get this, Sunset Overdrive at 27, which I thought Sunset Overdrive looked like a, a top 10 to me. Um, from what I saw of the game, it looked fresh, vibrant, super exciting. It was beaten by the order. The order was 26. Um, so that, I thought that was kind of interesting. I thought for, for sure Sunset Overdrive made a better impression I, I than the order did at E3, but uh, – I, I think the order I think the order is leading like I think we're getting real shitty previews of the order. Mm. Like I honestly like think about it. It's Ready at Dawn's first console game. Like they're they're prepping it. Mm -hmm. Like I think that they've exposed it badly, but any any time you hear any like like big like Jeff Gertzman or any media outlet talk about it, it's only po it's really only positive things. Yeah. Like you, like I've never heard. Like the graphical fidelity is great. Like the thermite gun is awesome. Mm. Like maybe it's a little linear, but they don't know yet because if they don't know if that's just what they're showing. Right. Like, like I think the like I honestly, like honest to God, I think the order is going to be a fine game. Mm. But I think that a lot of people are like oh another Sony linear game, hardy hardy horror. It's like okay. You got another Halo coming, you know? It's mm. like, but, yeah. like, I think Sunset Overdrive will be, I think Sunset Overdrive will be an 8. I think it'll be a fun game. Yeah, you don't think it's going to go beyond that? No. What what remedy, I'm sorry, what uh, Insomniac games do go beyond that? Yeah, that's true. Kyle, what do you think? This is one of your most um, highly anticipated, an anticipated yeah. games of the whole year. Uh, Heil. Oh, I'm here. Sorry, Sunset Overdrive. That's what you're talking about. Yeah, like what? Yeah. What is your? What are your? You know, we just kind of went up and down one side of it and down the other. What, what do you think for you being one of your most highly touted exclusives? It'll probably get an eight, but um, from the looks of it, the fun factor looks like it might be a nine. Yeah. Hopefully, they get the combat right and the grinding and trans transversing is uh, right. Because if they do, because then that could be uh, a lot of fun to power up your weapons. So mm. I enjoy their game. So I'll. I can think GameSpot will score an eight, Metacritic, mid eighties. Yeah, yeah. Loaded question for you, Heil. Um, given your allegiance, we all are <laughs> well aware of. Would you have placed Sunset Overdrive ahead of or behind the order based on based on what you saw at E three? Ahead. Yeah. Did Did you? I'm 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 excited for the order. Like I want to play it. The actually the only um the only thing that has got me down on the order is when they announced that there was no multiplayer for it whatsoever. Um, not, not compet I wouldn't do competitive multiplayer anyways, but I was, it, the game lends itself to four player co-op and mm -hmm. I was, I was kind of jacked that that could turn it into a $60 purchase for me. But the fact that they said it's just going to be an, a straight SP, um, and from what I believe I've heard, it's not terribly long. Are they looking to come in between like ten and fifteen hours? Probably. Um, that's not a sixty dollar purchase for me. I mean, does are you jacked for the order? Is there anything you have, you know, kind of mental precautions for on that game? Yeah, like you said, if there's no uh, replayability, that could be wondering if it's worth a full sixty dollars, um, or if it's worth like GameFly or something like that. But right. Um, like I said, we know someone that's uh, working mm. on the game, so I'm kind of rooting for them. So yeah, totally. So I hope it uh, hope it does does well, but uh, I think Sunset, from what they sh they uh, they've shown more of it. Mm. So and, and there is co-op with that. So um, I think there'll be some longer legs with that. But it doesn't mean I don't want the order just as bad. But yep. if I had to pick, I would pick Sunset. So yeah, nice. 
Um, so the, yeah, then moving forward, I mean, you know, you've got Xenoblade Chronicles X at 34. Um, that's the RPG from Monolith um, for the Wii U. Um, uh, you know, uh, go ahead. Uh, go ahead. I, I don't know. I think like what's like I think I, I like I don't know like I, I, I love the Wii U so much. It's it's sad to see that nothing comes. Mm. Like Mario, like Mario Kart Eight is coming. Like well, it came. Yeah. I, but I don't like. I, I like. I like. I'm growing up. I can't. Like there used to be a time where I would buy like almost every new release. Yeah. And it's just like I'm growing up. Like I that money has to be put away mm. now. You know. Like I'm I'm growing up. But it's just like I like I don't want to sit and play. Like like I'm not so fanatical about Mario Kart. Um. Uh, you know, you definitely have to get Smash, but like, you know, Bayonetta two was this big selling point. Yeah, and it's like, wh- like, where is it? Like, where's Bayonetta two hiding? And Xenoblade Chronicles and Zelda. Mm. But like, like I, like I feel like Nintendo is, like I, I feel like this is, if anything, their second to last console. Like, yeah. they'll they'll probably have one more, and. I go think third party go third because it's just you you can't support like you can't have these systems like I wouldn't be surprised if the PS4 was around 10 million right now the Xbox one was hovering somewhere pretty between five and six mm. and like what's the Wii U sitting at like well hold on let me let me check because I don't want to well wasn't it at four when the other consoles launched Nintendo consoles have always pretty much been that way, except possibly the GameCube. So I don't see this. Well, being, the, with the Wii, I don't see this being their Wii. last uh, console. They can support this first-party games and the few third-party uh, games that they no, get. No, no, no. I'm not saying. I'm saying like second to last. Like, like it's probably. Hold on. Let me double check. Mm. One more console. As, as of March 34. For uh, 6.17 million shipped. Uh, the system, they said by January, it had sold. I, I don't, I don't know what I'm reading here. Like it's, it looks like Nintendo probably like edited the page to be like, mm. you'll never, you'll never figure it out. Um. Um, <laughs> let me see. Uh, da, 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 da. He's on here. It's it says it says uh six point seventeen uh six point seventeen million Wii U sold. Would that be sad if the Wii U's above the Xbox One now? Um, well, sad might not be the right word, considering the console launched a whole year before it, and within the first six months, both those consoles caught up to it or or surpassed it. Yeah, but but look at where the Wii U came from. Like, by the end of, like, 2012 or 2013, it was only, like, what, 3.5, 4 million? Yeah. And, and yeah. the PS4 is just an unstoppable juggernaut. Yeah, the PS4 is, is the mark my words right now. The PS4 is going to be the item at Christmas that parents are going crazy trying to find and are not going to be able to. It's going to be <laughs> the Wii's second Christmas. Mm-hmm. It was in the and the third Christmas and the fourth Christmas, how you could not touch a Wii. Uh, yeah, I like, I just, w- w- yeah, but what were we like saying? Yes, I feel like that's what's going to happen with the PS4. But yeah, I like. I think. I think this is probably like Nintendo's second to last console, yeah, cons- cons- considering how the market. And granted, that's like a fifteen years from now. Like it's people- not a bad thing either. No, I don't look at it at least like it's a bad. I mean, they're not. They're not competing with the other two consoles directly anyway. So if if the Wii and I this wow, there's gonna be a lot of Nintendo people who hate what I'm about to say, but. If, if it's not competing, if it's not doing great, and it's not bringing really anything to the table by having the existence of that console, and other than the remote play being kind of neat on the pad, I mean, is there anything? I know, Animal, you're a big fan of it. Heil, you own it. I, I love it. But I own is it. there anything that the console is Do we? Is the world a better place with the Wii U in it, or could we just live getting those games, you know, great Nintendo games every year on a Sony or a Microsoft platform. We we could live every year getting those great games on a Sony or Microsoft platform. So <laughs> you know no, we we really could cuz like yeah. if if you look at Gen 6, 
Like the PS2 was just this freak accident, yeah. just like the Wii. Perfect storm. Yeah. Yeah, and it's just like you can't you can't go on like yeah Nintendo had their their day in the sun with the Wii and it's all great, but like how fast is that war chest gonna drop for R and D and games? And this and that? Like you can't they can't 